good morning students so far we have le learned about the living world of plants under this what we have learned the plant the portion the underground portion the underground main axis of the plant is known as the root and then the aerial portion the aerial main axis of the portion is the stem the underground main axis of the plant is the root the aerial main axis of the plant is the stem and then about the leaf then about the root root system then we have seen about the root system two type of root the top root and the fibrous root system the top root system which is the characteristics of dicotyledons the dicot consists of two cotyledons which is present inside the leaf monocot consists of only a single cotyledon we cannot split the seed into two so that is the characteristics of fibrous root system monocotyledon is the characteristics of fibrous root system dicotyledon is the characteristics of top root is the characteristics of dicotyledon root stem okay then then about the shoot system now we are going to see about the shoot system the aerial main axis of the plant consists of the shoot system okay the shoot system consists which bears the leaves stem the leaves flowers and the fruit the place where the leaf arises from the stem is known as node and then the place is between the interval between the two node is known as internode and then we can see in some plants the terminal portion that is the apex of the stem so this portion is called as the apex of the stem if the plant bears the flower here this is known as the terminal flower or terminal bud if the flower arises here laterally lateral side this is known as axil axillary bud so the stem bears the terminal flower or the terminal bud and the axillary bud okay then coming about the function of the shoot system functions as we know about the root what are the function the anchorage or the fixation then conduction storage so these are the anchorage conduction and then transportation transport it transport the water and the minerals which are present in the soil to the shoot system so these are the functions of the root when coming to the shoot what are shoot system what are the function mean it also transport what the root is doing they are absorbing conduct and then they are passing the minerals and the water to the shoot system what the shoot system is doing they are transporting all the minerals and the water to their leaves and then to the flower etc so transport transport is the main function and then what does the shoot do it also trans it also transport the food transport of water and minerals to to the air parts and then transport of food which part of the plant is preparing the food it is the leaf the leaves are preparing the food for the plant so that food is transported through the shoot system of the plant so main function of the shoot system is the transport and then it supports 
the branches the leaves the flower fruit etc all these parts are supported by the stem portion so this is the main function of the shoot system and also it conduct conduction transport and conduction are nothing but transport mean they are taking the the root is taking the water and mineral from the soil and then it is passed uh, passed through the shoot system that shoot what they are doing they are sending the water and minerals to the other parts of their body and then conduction mean like the same what the plant is doing they are taking the water and the passing it to all parts of the body this can be explained through an experiment for this what we need mean the balsam plant why we are taking the balsam plant mean it the plant become glossy in appearance shiny so that we can take the glass and then fill two or three drops of red ink inside the glass for this we should, we should take a glass and some water fill this with pour two drops of red ink inside the glass keep the balsam plant inside the glass keep as keep it as such after two days we can observe the red streak the plant become red in color because it takes the water which is present in the glass the color of the water now become red red okay that red color is passes through the stem portion and also to the leaf so from this what we can observe the plant are conducting the minerals and the water so their main function is transport of water and minerals and then transport of food which is prepared by the leaves then they are giving they are supporting the branches leaves fruit etc and then main function is conduction okay so these all are about the shoot system next we move on to leaves so this is the structure of the leaf the portion where the leaf arises from the stem is known as the node we have seen isn't it then the stalk of the leaf this portion is known as the stalk the stalk of the leaf is known as petiole the stalk of the leaf is known as petiole and then the expanded portion or the flat portion this is known as lamina or leaf blade the stalk of the leaf is known as petiole and then the flat expanded portion of the leaf is known as leaf blade or lamina leaf lamina and then we can find a vein which is passing through the center of the leaf this vein is known as midrib this is known as main vein that is known as midrib and then some lateral veins arises from the leaf so this is the lateral vein which arises from the midrib so the leaf consists of the petiole the leaf blade or lamina and then the vein the main main axis consists of the midrib then other branches also arises from the leaf so these are the parts of the plant and then the portion where the leaf arises from the stem so the portion where the leaf arises from the stem is known as node and then it is also called as the axil here we can find the stipules so this portion is known as stipule here 
this is known as the stipule in rose rose plant the stipule is modified into thorns okay so what is the main function of the stipule mean it protect the leaf when it is young the stipule protects the leaf when it is young so this is the these are all the structure of the parts of the leaf and then dicotyledon leaves possess dicotyledons possess the reticulate type of venation so the arrangement of vein this is known as veins veins of the leaves the arrangement of veins on the leaf is known as venation the arrangement of veins on the leaf is known as venation in dicotyledon plant this type of plant is known as dicotyledon plant the arrangement is known as reticulate venation because it look like a web like structure the veins appear to be vein web like structure so it is known as reticulate type of venation but in monocot we can see the parallel type of venation example in banana we can see the this type of venation that is parallel the main midrib and then the veins are arranged like this this is known as parallel venation so this two type of venation appears in leaf reticulate venation which is found in dicotyledons and parallel venation which is found in monocot then about the function what the leaves are doing mean mainly they are preparing their food the plants are preparing their food through the process called photosynthesis all the leaves appear to be green in color because the presence of the pigment called pigment called chlorophyll this is the green color pigment that gives the this color to the plant then the, with the help of this chlorophyll pigment and with the help of sunlight the plants are able to prepare the air food what is that food called starch okay what the plant are taking in the plant are taking the gas that is carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere so the leaves are taking in the carbon dioxide they are taking the carbon dioxide and then with the help of sunlight and the chlorophyll they are preparing the own food called starch so through the leaves the leaves possess stomata the stomata at the base of their portion the the base portion of the leaf contain stomata the stomata this cannot be seen through our eyes with, with the help of microscope we can see this stomata through the stomata this gas that is carbon dioxide enters into the leaves and then after preparation of the food what they are doing they are releasing oxygen what we are breathing the oxygen so with the help of chloro carbon dioxide chlorophyll sunlight the plant are preparing their food called starch and they are releasing the gas called oxygen then the this carbon dioxide and oxygen are coming out through the stomata which is present at the base of the leaf so this are this is the structure of the leaf what does it comprises of the leaf consist of the petiole and then the main midrib main vein it also contains veins that is midrib and then lateral branches main other veins arises from the lateral side 
So, this is about the step and then it contains petiole. Petiole is useful for exchange of the gases. So, with the help of the all these material, the plants are able to prepare their own food. Okay. So, this is about the structure of the leaf, stem and root. Okay. Okay. The main function of the plant is, sorry, leaf is photosynthesis. After photosynthesis, the transpiration. What do you mean by transpiration? So, we are pouring the water. If the plant contain excess of water, it is released through the stomata. So, we have seen about the stomata, the opening which is found at the base of the leaf. So, through the stomata, the excess of water, excess water is released. So, this process is known as transpiration. So, this is the one of the main function of the leaf and then respiration. The gaseous exchange through the stomata takes place. So, they are taking in carbon dioxide and what they are doing? They are releasing oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. So, these are all the main function of the leaf. So far, what we have learned? The root system and then shoot system about the leaf. So, this is about the structure form and structure form and functions of the leaf stem and leaf stem and leaf leaf stem and root okay then we can classify the plants into two types that is based on flower some plants give rise to maximum all the plants give rise to flower so they are called as flowering plants but some of the plants they do not produce flower they are known as non flowering plants so based on the type of flower the plants are classified into flowering and non flowering plants based on the seed the plants are classified into angiosperms and gymnosperms angiosperms mean uh, almost all the fruit contains the seed the fruit the seed is found within the fruit so angiosperm are the are the plants which contain the seed inside the fruit but in gymnosperm the seed is not find inside the fruit so the seeds are said to be open naked seed the, the type of seed find in gymnosperm are known as naked seed because they are not covered by the they are not find within the fruit the seeds are not enclosed by the seed coat or the fruit so, angiosperm contain the seed which is found within the fruit. So, they are called angiosperm. The fruits are, the seeds are of the gymnosperm are said to be naked seed. So, this is the two types of plants which on the based on the flower and seed. Flowering plants and non-flowering plants, angiosperms and gymnosperm. All the dicotyledon plants belonging to the angiosperm family. Okay. So, so, so far we have learnt about this type, the type of the plants, ok. So, next about the habitat, what do you mean by habitat? The place where we are living, the dwelling place where the plants are found is known as the habitat that we can see in the next session. Thank you.